the girl who sells the potions, she shows up in Final Fantasy 16 only four, kind of five-ish times. That's it. And she does actually have a name, although I don't think we ever hear it in the game, and that's Kihel. Right. Is that how you say it? Kihel? I would say Kihel, yeah. And we really don't know much about her other than we know she's an orphan and we know that she survives by selling these restoratives and these curatives that she's made herself. And while she only shows up four or five times in the game, she interacts with all of the main characters, almost like she kind of ties them together, which is really interesting. With Kiel, yes, you could have just extracted her from the story entirely, right? And mm -hmm. it could have been written completely differently. But why did she exist, right? And why did she exist in these specific scenes? And why was she always interacting with dominance throughout this entire fiasco? She could have appeared just interacting with normal people, mm -hmm. right, throughout the entire story. But it's always after a crystal falls, always in the vicinity of a dominant. Yeah. And then the last time we see her is obviously after a crystal falls, but then preceding like the fall of the final crystal, right? So yeah. it's kind of like she has a purpose here and she's tying all of this stuff together. And so one of the things I'll call out here, you know, kind of going back to the interacting with the dominance and the kind of interaction of the elements. So there are three that she specifically doesn't interact with in this story, right? Uh-huh. Garuda, Wind, Stone, and Odin, Darkness, right? Mm -hmm. So those three, she doesn't interact with at all in any way. And they are also typically, again, in Final Fantasy lore, they kind of have negative perceptions. Yeah, they're like the destructive icons, The right? destructive ones. Garuda is usually some slutty dressed, like right. psycho laughing, doesn't care. Yeah, right. exactly. And Titan's usually just this destructive power that's the size of a mountain. And Odin is darkness and darkness right. is not associated with goodness. Exactly. So those were like the counterbalance to the other elements, right? Now I want to tie it back to another thing. So, you know, there's the blight. And when Ultima's dying at the end, he's asking Clive, like, what do you think is going to happen now? And Clive is like, I don't know. What do you imagine will befall this world now that you have gained your precious freedom? I honestly don't know. But I doubt it will be pretty. A sorry tale of sin and suffering, hardship and pain. And it was for this that you fought so fiercely. Basically saying like, you know, congratulations, you've essentially killed the earth. My congratulations. Relish this victory, knowing that you have but delayed the inevitable. Your world is already dead. May you enjoy an eternity on its blackened husk. But the thing that comes back to mind is that imagine we're fast forwarding like at the end of the game, we're in the middle of the credits somewhere. So it's after the fight with Ultima and all that has finished. But before uh -huh. the credit scenes where the little kids are playing in the middle of there, there's a massive gap in time, right? Like hundreds, yeah. perhaps thousands of years. Something has to change, right? When we get the post credit scene, obviously the world is not a husk. Life goes on. So I think of it as like, okay, the blight was going to consume the entire world, right? But it didn't. So something changed that caused it to either go away or stop or whatever the case is, right? And so I'm, I'm looking back at the elements of this, right? So the blight, it killed things, right? It mm -hmm. sapped all of the ether out of the ground so plants couldn't grow. And so the thing that would make life progress, or if you think about the history of Earth in terms of like... How did life initially start on the planet, right? It was born of water. That's how it all started. Like our life, not theirs. Human life, right? But life in general, most scientists believe that life cannot exist without water. So the blight is taking everything away. The only thing that would be able to fight the blight and return anything back would have to be water, right? You would need water to be able to do that. And the blight had actually poisoned the water that was around the hideaway. Remember on one of the side quests, we had to go get some kind of goop to put on the hull of the boat. Oh, yeah, the pitch. Because the blight water was eating the hull of the guy's boat. Yeah. And so I'm trying to figure out, like, how do we get to the end state, right? And so one of the things I found in doing some research, it was a research paper that said, water has tremendous healing potential for the human mind, the body, and the spirit. Water can physiologically and psychologically benefit people because of its therapeutic nature. Since those ancient times, water has been one of the most 
effective elements in combating illness and injury. Do you think that Kihel is the not yet primed dominant of Leviathan? So when I go back and look at her calmatives, curatives, and restoratives, all water-based, all healing mind, body, and spirit, they would have the ability at scale to heal a planet that was afflicted with a blight. Okay. So if you had just like kind of the skill set or innate ability to heal, which it seems like Kihel does, right? That's why she's yeah. making these things. And you could scale it to planetary scale. You could, in theory, fight back a blight and actually get rid of it. But you would need an immense amount of hydropower to do that. So Is she Leviathan the Lost? There's only one dominant that's missing in this story. <laughs> gosh, you really think she's that? And so I think she has, I don't know whether, she, I don't know whether she's Leviathan's dominant, but I think she has something to do with that dominant. That is, okay, mind equals blown because they do talk about, I did not think any of this, by the way. So this is all new thoughts for me, but they do throughout the game talk about how Leviathan did exist, right? He's Leviathan the lost. Right. He just hasn't revealed himself. In, he hasn't had a dominant for a long time. I don't know if they specify exactly how long, but it's been so long. Right. Leviathan the Lost is on the mural, mm -hmm. right? And Joshua mentions him when he looks at the mural or her. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Ah. Uh, Even Leviathan the Lost is here. So, wow. Hmm. That is like so deep. Ernest, I you have to reach right because this is this is what these writers are doing now. I could obviously I could be completely wrong, right? I could just made all this up in my mind. So the only thing, so I hate to even, you know, bring us down here or, or nix this, but the only thing is that dominance we can assume cease to exist once the crystal is destroyed by Clive, right? Because mm -hmm. magic is gone from the earth. That was said in his little speech before he does it. And see Ultima's legacy. Bearers, dominance, crystals, magic, consigned to the flames. And I think that final little fireball that he casts is like it's it doesn't last for very long. It just uh -huh. snuffs out. So I think the idea is that dominance, magic, all of the icon stuff ceases to exist at that point. So then Leviathan would continue to be lost and never reveal himself, right? I and mean, that's possible too, right? That's another interpretation, right? That yeah. all of that ceased to exist. It's kind of a letdown because I like the Leviathan idea. Does it go away immediately or does it take time Yeah, to kind of dwindle and eventually go away? I assumed that Clive's sacrifice was the point that the earth could start to heal because the magic was no longer sucking the ether out of the world. That's how I took it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that that's accurate because we have no idea in that credits time jump. Right. They don't tell us anything. Which kind of is one of my issues with the ending, to be honest. But you're right. It could go a few different ways. Yeah. They did it on purpose, right? To kind of leave it open to yeah, which interpretation I'm... where everybody could have their own opinion of... <sighs> Of what happened there in the end, and which is okay. No, it's not. I, not I, for me. Personally, I don't like that kind of a thing, but the writers have done a phenomenal job with this. The writers did such an amazing job. Even if you don't like the ending or you don't like parts of the ending, you can't dismiss the amazing talent that went into the bulk of this game <laughs> right. up until that point, at least, right? And some people do really love the ending. They would stand by the writers the entire way through. Absolutely. So interesting. Yeah, ah, so I, that's fascinating. Who knows?